So, Babajit, now let me come to uh, Rahu and Ketu. Okay. <laughs> there is such a lot of uh, 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 material of Rahu and Ketu. And in some ways, there is very little material on Rahu and Ketu. So, I would like to delve into your treasure trove and find out your perspective of Rahu and Ketu, the, you know, the Rahu-Ketu axis, as they call. And, you know, what is, how does one deal with Rahu-Ketu in a chart? What is one supposed to, how, how is one supposed to look at Rahu and Ketu? Yeah, so if you want to know Rahu-Ketu basically, what uh, the way I approach it, you see why they say that Rahu-Ketu are very turbulent planets or they are creating disasters or more than turbulence and disaster it is unknown basically right why do they say that hmm. because you um, to understand that you have to understand the story which is associated with the avatar yes which is varha avatar varha hmm. avatar is who basically that form who incarnate who, uh, who vishnu incarnated as to kill hiranyaksh hiranyaksh was the uh, brother of hiranyakashyap hmm. so he had so much greed, so much desire that he wanted to take away the entire gold. And then when he did that from the earth, mm -hmm. the balance that the earth could not maintain the balance and it went mm -hmm. down into the oceans mm -hmm. below. Mm -hmm. And because of that, Bhumi Devi approached Lord Vishnu and said that, oh, my balance is now gone. <laughs> and that's what Rahu does. Rahu says, I want everything. I want this, I want that, ye chahiye, wo chahiye, sab chahiye. <laughs> mm. Mm. And then what happens? Everybody else is in trouble and ultimately you also die. Yes. Which means that when then what happened? Varadev took incarnation and then mm. he went down the ocean and mm. then he pulled out the earth like this. Mm. And that's what happens when Rahu Dasa is running. Something comes up from the blue which you didn't expect. <laughs> because that's how the avatar is functioning, you see. So basically what's the lesson here is, whatever you have done, whatever you had tried to hide or whatever you had tried to, because Rahu basically represents all the karma that we have done in our past lives. Okay. And that is why, and that is why they say that, <clears throat> suppose if Jupiter denies, then Saturn gives. And if Saturn Correct. denies, then Rahu gives. And if Rahu mm. is also not able to give that, mm. no planet can give you. And on the other side, if Rahu Ketu takes away something from you, you mm. can't stop mm. it. And that is this is very important. I would like, like to share here. I have seen many people, uh, some of my friends who have had relationship issues. I mean, this I am kind of monitoring from last four or five years. And this is, this is like bang on. This is so true. Okay. If they have had a breakup or some serious problem okay. during one month of an eclipse. Okay. So, suppose the last year eclipse was when? On 11th August, I guess. 30, mm. 21st August, I guess. Mm. Mm. And if something had happened in nearby the month of August or some 15 days in that September period, mm -hmm. then there was some problem. Bang on. That relationship is not going to work. <laughs> and that's happening with people. I checked with 2016 eclipse also and with 2015 eclipse also. Because that means Rahu Ketu is taking away things from you if the break is happening during the eclipse. Oh. Which means that you there's no way you can get that back. <laughs> because it's like Varhadev pulling that from the ocean. Yes. So it means that it is there in the innermost core. Otherwise, that thing would not come to you. Yes. And similarly, uh, you, you had seen Donald Trump, his Rahu was transiting in the ascendant, I guess. Then he became the president. So, so when, uh, when these things happen, then you have to understand that it's Rahu who is giving you. Yes. And then basically it means that whatever is there, which nobody can see because Varadev could bring that out with his tusk. He was in the form mm. of a mm. which, which nobody could have uh, done actually. Yes. And another thing interesting here is, 
if you go into the story how varadev came that is also very interesting <laughs> he came through the nostril of lord brahma yes as okay. far as i know some classics say in a different way but as far as i know he came out from lord brahma's nostrils yes. okay so that and that's the i mean what comes out from the nose nothing good <laughs> hmm. Hmm. but but how in the universe is such a powerful thing coming out from the nostril and that that means in rahu period these things can happen that the least expected things happen the least expected i mean you are like this will never happen to me but exactly that happens because the story is linked like that and what is the end result hiranya kashyap is killed yes which means that ultimately rahu is only going to give us suffering that is the thing which we have to understand here because rahu is very powerful because rahu eclipses the sun and moon also yes mm-hmm. which means that sun and moon are basically what us basically nothing more than that so mm-hmm. when rahu ketu will eclipse the sun and moon also we have mm-hmm. to understand that who is cutting rahu actually that is very important and the only planet that has the power to check rahu that is jupiter <laughs> so that means when we have the help of varadev with us which is what jupiter mm. because jupiter is god then mm. then how much ever low we have sinked because oh. of rahu mm. we can still come up like that still come up oh okay yes we can always do that there again comes this fate free will concept <laughs> we can always bump up from nowhere see you take the example of pandavas this is the last thing i will say in this regard pandavas yudhishthir maharaj my god is the ruler of the entire universe yes then suddenly this gambling match happens and gambling is what basically rahu right that's right suddenly things are taken away cheating shakuni basically <laughs> and then overnight it's like as in hindi this na takta palad gaya he became a beggar his wife dropadi was insulted and then thank god krishna protected her whatever it is but at the end it was total disaster with him so that happened sometimes but then what happened he did not lose his calm yes and in fact during that uh, this uh, gambling match which was going on bhima had taken a vow that i will drink the blood of this dushasan <laughs> and i will break the thigh of uh, this duryodhan and then he Correct. said to and he said to arjuna and arjuna will kill karna yes so these are the things which happened but yudhishthir maharaj did not lose his calm he was still stable because the word yudhishthira means one who is calm during yudhi also in war yes in war oh. situation he is sthira in yudh also that is the meaning so he was always calm and he followed the vanvas yes whatever how many ever years that it, it, it was given and then the incognito also until the last moment he did hmm. not compromise with his principles till the last moment he never compromised in fact and because of that the end result was he again became the emperor of the world yes and lord krishna ensured that he only rules <laughs> so this means that whatever rahu ketu can cause difficulties when we have varadev which is who, who is actually what lord vishnu so hmm. when we worship lord vishnu then whatever problems are there whatever rahu related issues are there everything will vanish because hiranyaksha took everything but then the earth again came out so rahu is completely checked if we chant lord vishnu if we chant the name of lord ram or krishna or if we recite the vishnu sahasra naam all problems of rahu will be solved <laughs> may not be tomorrow morning but it will happen gradually and rahu has so many things actually rahu also represents who he represents ravan basically yes because ravan also is one of the uh, this shadar ipus the six anathas na Uh, kama krodha loba like this that video also i will make in the in, in the near future but ravan is what basically last yes ravan's problem is what he will always put the eye on the wife of other people <laughs> so and then who finally killed ravan nobody can kill ravan no body my god he is so powerful but then when lord ram came he perished so if you just take the name of lord ram that's it and in vishnu sahasra naam lord shiva tells to mother parvati yes parvati is asking uh, lord shiva oh my dear husband the whole universe is meditating on you everybody is chanting om namah shivaya <laughs> and 
I am astonished that you are also sitting in meditation. What's going on? And I, I can't understand. Who are you meditating upon? Hmm. Hmm. And then Lord hmm. Shiva speaks that famous verse: Shri Rama Rama hmm. Rama Ti Rama Rama Mano Rama Sastha Nama Tatulyam Rama Nama Varanani. That oh my dear Rama Devi, I am meditating on Lord Ram. Yes, Sastha Nama Tatulyam Rama Nama Varanani means thousand names of Vishnu Sastha Nama. Is equal to Rama Nama means once if you chant the name of Lord Ram, then you have chanted thousand names of Lord Vishnu, and there are other references in the scriptures which also says that three names of Ram is equal to one name of Krishna. So, if you chant the name of Ram or the name of Krishna, and if you try to get close to them by reading the scriptures, as I always keep saying in my videos, that you meet holy people, then you associate, go to satsang, learn the scriptures, and maintain a good lifestyle. By that, Rahu can easily be checked. And stay away from those things which Rahu represents. What Rahu represents? Pornography, prostitution, all those things. Yes, eating meat, killing, bigotry, doing gossip. Ladies especially, my God. <laughs> stay away from gossip. So if you keep Rahu away and you go towards Jupiter, then automatically this uh, all the problems related to rahu will be solved because ultimately it rules the 11th house yes it rules aquarius so that rules the desire and you see how the zodiac is designed 11th house is also the natural badhak so people say oh i am unhappy why because i want to become a millionaire no you are not unhappy because you are not having money you are unhappy because you have desires hmm. in the time you are having materialistic desire you are on a royal road for frustration. You will always be unhappy. <laughs> so now this does not mean that you don't have any material desire. You go to the forest. But your materialistic desires have to be in line with God, with spirituality. Only then that will become beautiful. And then you become somebody like Yudhishthir Maharaj, who is the perfect example. He was a king. But when Lord Krishna left this world, he just did not speak anything. Yudhishthir Maharaj took mon breath. He maintained silence. And he started walking towards the Himalayas. So imagine the level of detachment this person has. So then Rahu can easily be checked <laughs> if we follow in the footsteps of God. Not, not that challenging. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I don't know how one can get all this knowledge at 25. <laughs> the, secret to, the secret to spiritual achievements at 25, you must write a book. <laughs> I know, I know you have video of how to be a yogi in a city. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, Babajit, it was an absolute pleasure speaking with you. Yes. Uh, the six questions that you have answered, I'm sure the audience will find it very interesting and very enlightening to go through these answers that you have given. Of course, you have many such questions answered in your uh, 360, 370, maybe now 380, I don't know uh, the, the latest score, but you did 365 and 365 the days. So uh, all, all that is available on Exotic Astrology on, the, on your YouTube channel. And of course, uh, your consultation uh, is also available on, if you'd like to mention the website again, Vedic Renaissance, did you say? Yeah, but it's in Wix, so it's like a long. Uh, Wix, yeah. So I will. So I'll, I'll, I'll put. A, yeah, yeah. We, I'll put the link there. So anyone would like to uh, take your astrological advice or your spiritual advice or any other consultation advice from you, they should uh, go to your website. The link will be below in this in this video. And Babaji, thank you very much for taking time off. I think it's uh, just five minutes short of two hours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's your by, by far your longest video so far. Okay, <laughs> 20, twenty minutes to thirty minutes is your, the normal size of a video. Uh, so uh, it's now uh, ten o'clock in India. I wake up at five o'clock tomorrow morning to listen oh. to another of your videos. <laughs> so thank you very much, Babaji, and all the best to you. Thank you very much for inviting. I don't know. I mean, so many people are viewing this channel. I keep hearing, oh, this channel is like too good. So many videos on this and that topic. So I, I can't imagine that I'm in such a big forum and I'm speaking. So if somebody uh, wants to go my channel, go to my channel, then 
you can go and you can see uh, how to be a yogi inside a city <laughs> yes very good video in fact there are so many so many so many good videos so many all of it yes yes thank you very much all the best all the best yeah. all yeah. the best